wonder what the mic is picking up. <coughs> Ambient sounds. Alright, let's see if it's live. Hey, we're live. Digital comic lettering, that's exactly the right type. Oop, I gotta read that. Rex Warden is here. Alright, dudes, let's start working. I thought about doing a face reveal, but I want to save that for something special like a stretch goal. Okie doke. Hey, Carl's here. We are cleaning up and lettering page 14 tonight. There's no social security number on my desktop background. I think we can do it. Never need to show your face as Retroid. I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to show my face because it's kind of like a cool mystery. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like I should do it if, like, we reach some ridiculous goal. Like, like if you guys make me a millionaire selling comic books, I'll show my face as a thank you, right? Like, an extremely high goal. For all we know, you could really be a talking cartoon dog person. Exactly, you understand it. <laughs> Jeb Jam is here. Hi, I'm sick as a dog. I'm cold. I've been listening to Lord of the Rings, but today... I'm just gonna chill and listen to some tunes with you guys. Uh, and do some play on. Let's start with a curve. I love curves and Photoshop. Chicken soup always helps me feel better when I've got anything but influenza. Yeah, you can't eat anything when you've got influenza. I had like the stomach bug too or something. Like, it wasn't regular flu. It was just like my stomach felt queasy. I thought I'll go to bed. Woke up in the middle of the night, had it, then I gave it to all my family. It wasn't coronavirus. I had that before coronavirus became a meme. I love the waifu for coronavirus. I, I want to finally watch Hentalia. Because that was like the hit anime of 2008, but it kind of started the trend of people making Gaijinka stuff. Like, I, I, my, my roommate tried to make me watch Italia, and I thought it was a little too ridiculous for my taste, but I kind of want to go back and give it a shot, maybe see what I can learn about World War II as someone who, I don't know much about World War II, it's a really complicated war, like I know my grandpa's Pearl Harbor story, I've read like, you know, basic like, how Hitler rose to power kind of, kind of stuff. Whoa, look at all that got. Alright, so this is my magic check. Inverse. <coughs> Spice, uh, even if it was Kung Flu to be in North America, you would have plenty of medical attention out to get over Yeah, apparently people are surviving it as long as they have medical attention. It's like a little pneumonia. Well, the massive files take me really well. <coughs> 20 pixels. Is that too big? I bet that's too big. I probably don't know. That case. No, that's perfect. All right. So by expanding that selection, I now know. Look at all that dust. I should just transition to digital, but I like the feeling of charcoal in my hands. All right. So we make a new layer. Bright color time. Bright RBG color. What color do we want? Let's go with pink. don't want to uh, alias ally, alias it. Hello, Fly Fox Pro. Fly Fox Pro is the creator of Peter the Problematic Person. I read it on Webtoons. You can also read Jane Smith, Wannabe Gladiator on Webtoons. If you like it, give it a 10 star. That'll help introduce it to more people. All right, so there's our pink layer, so we can see where the dust is. Now, layer, layer style, blending options. 
multiply. So this is gonna be like a really meticulous stream. Like I'm just gonna be cleaning up all night until until whenever I get it done. So I'll have some chill tunes. Oh yeah, I've got the uh, I'm playing music on pretzel, and the selection is like all pretzel music because I'm OCD and I want to hear everything they have. So it should be like a mix of uh, like hardcore songs, mix of chill songs, RBG value. <laughs> Yeah, but that doesn't show up at the end. I think I'm gonna add some color to this page. I wanna work some color ideas into a few more pages, kinda like to give me a note for when I come back later and do full color. Then it's kinda like a cool Wizard of Oz thing where you know some objects have like a nice little symbolic color to them. I'll have to print it and see if it looks good still. Save it as a separate layer for now in case it doesn't look good. Aloha, Edwin Boyette is here. I think that, sir, this is the first time you have joined a stream of mine. Aloha, the man with the golden radio voice himself. So I, I told Edwin Boy, Boyette this behind the scenes, but if he wants to do his thing where he likes re he reads the comic and does his work, what is that black thing? That's weird. Why is it? Oh, oh, I screwed up. I've been drawing on the wrong layer this whole time. I screwed up. I'm a failure. Everything's wrong. <laughs> New layer. Now we got it. All right, we're ready. We're in business. Thanks for the shout out, Marm. Says Flyfox. I'm still trying to figure out how I'll color my book I'm working on. Well, it looks like you're doing like just some like quick digital coloring, right? Or are you working on a different book than Peter the Problematic Person? a trackpad, by the way. My wrists will not thank me. Warden says the terror of you're working on the wrong layer, bro. Yeah, I know. And I felt it. Now, the way I do it is I just don't care about my layers too much. I try to do as much as I can traditionally. And I don't know. Like, it's messed me up a few times, but I just like, I'll either like create 90 layers and they'll just, I'll just keep doing different things. Especially when I would do abstract painting, I wouldn't worry about layers too much. Oh, Fly Fox Pro is working on a secret project. Nice. <coughs> I want to get uh, <coughs> Expendables Go to Hell for my dad. He is such a big Sly fan. But I don't know. Like, I always feel bad because I want to go in and get... Like, I'm such a completionist. I want to get all the covers. And part of me wonders, like, if there are prints of all the covers in the book... I won't get all the covers, but if the only way for me to get the art is to get is to get all the covers, then I kind of want to get all the covers. I don't know. I might have to like bug your boy Zach and ask him if there will be uh, a pinup gallery or something of all the variant covers. transitioning to like this whole grayscale area today so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like get a soft pencil and have a soft edge at the end of it so it's not too noticeable. I made the Corona joke earlier, yeah. I think it's just a regular old cold. I don't know, I work in public as a blue collar guy, so maybe, uh, 
Maybe as someone or other gave it to me. I had to quarantine some people in the state where I'm at. It probably gives away too much information. Who got quarantined? You don't know I'm in the United States. I could be anywhere. I, I could be Swedish, yeah. I could be PewDiePie's next door neighbor in Poland or wherever it's from. I really like that much of the secret is just longer work than actual scripting. Oh, oh, okay, it's not a secret that Fly Fox is working on a secret project. I gotcha. Yeah, there's a whole radio station for Chip to on the so I kinda like it. I just play it and chill. It's even less of a headache than 1903 music where people false copyright strike 1903 music. Volume is drowning me out, says Edna. Alright, that's good to know. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to take it down to. How about there? Yeah! Can you hear me now? <coughs> wow, I didn't know it was that, that big an effect. On my end, it's pretty subtle. I could probably move my mic closer. If I don't screw up. <coughs> don't screw it up, Marmaduke. Don't screw it up. All right, now it's a little closer to me. So I just have like a nice $20 <coughs> to find microphone. It's worked great for me. Like, I think I got it like in the first year of my channel and I'm really happy with it. I could probably do like audio books with it. I have a chiptune channel called uh, 8-Bit Hymnist, by the way. I haven't uploaded new music there in a while because it actually takes me longer to make music than to make art, and I want to prioritize art right now. But I also like try to find public domain music and share it there as well. So hit up 8-Bit Hymnist, Hymnist if you want some tunes. Okay, so I want someone to chat with me about something that is not drama related. I want you guys to shill a comic book that you are looking forward to reading in the comment section. Go. Yeah, it's much cleaner, all right. Expendables go to hell, yeah. The premise is from a well that isn't tapped or, yeah i know and it's actually kind of a really good fit for zach like he he had that expendables you know buddy comedy tough guy vibe for jawbreakers so i think it's a good fit for him i guess he's like the creator of the project and chuck dixon is the writer is that right i'm gonna leave that i'm gonna leave my mistakes in the art because i like mistakes mistakes show progress i'm gonna leave everything down here Except I'll probably clean up uh, faces a little bit because I like having clean faces. Wow, the dust really got over, over this one. When I use aerosol, I think it picks up some loose charcoal and sends it flying. Wouldn't be me if I didn't have like six extra steps. I can't use ink, so I gotta use charcoal, but then that means I have to spray fixative it, which means <laughs> I take it out to the garage. And open up the garage door so I don't inhale the fumes. I should make a video about that, actually. Like, some people may not know how to do that, and they'd appreciate knowing that. Any kind of, like, messy, dry material that uh, flies away easily.
at me, by the way, if you want to make sure I see your comment. That makes it pop up easier. The medal is here. The creator of... Uh, wait a second. Dynamis X Chaos. Yep, I knew it was Latin. X Dynamis Chaos. Carl and the metal are, like, always working. Every time they show up in my chat, they are, like, plugging away at something. And Edwin's learning to draw. What a cool crew Comics Twitter is. <coughs> oh, man, there's still a lot of dust. Look at all that. I only just partially got it. Dixon's the writer, Zach's the producer. Yeah, I kind of like that. Zach's a good idea guy. Like, he has some polish. She's like, I'm still mad at him that I caught a typo in Jawbreakers, and he didn't bother to fix it. And it wasn't like a little typo. It was like a, this is just, doesn't make sense typo. He just left it in because he didn't want to change the ISBN number. Like, fix the typo and let, like, the weirdo ISBN guy catch it. That's what I would do. Dare him, dare him to call me out on it. White Knight is here. Hashtag not today Satan. He saved me from diving headlong into drama last week. I love not today Satan. What a great meme. <coughs> Wait, I don't want 100%. I'm using the pencil, uh, like cartoonist pencil brush, which already has a pretty soft edge. So there's almost no point. Like, like if you want a really, really soft edge, you can lighten the opacity. But even if you're at like 100%, it's still going to produce a pretty soft effect. So it's good for like oop, cleaning up edges without, uh, what's it? Without having like a, like I'll show you. Like if I do that, right, you can see exactly where I went. And I don't like that. Get rid of her whiskers, no whiskers on our six-year-old female protagonist. I don't want five o'clock shadow, none of that. She wants to be a gladiator. She doesn't want to have a beard. One of my old designs for her, I had like a beard on her helmet as a joke. I also did like the thing that like Captain Marvel what is it? No, Miss Marvel did, where she used to have like these big gloves that made her hands look huge, and I thought that looked silly. So I stopped drawing her that way. Yeah, her face looks nice. <coughs> it doesn't look that good that way. It looks like Clown World that way. <coughs> Buckler is king! John Dillard Game of the System is here. Oh, remember to make periodic saves with sequential file names? Uh, I'm not that meticulous. I should do that, actually. Do, do, do desktop. I'm going to just save it as Photoshop. <coughs> I should put on the, I should just put on the chiptune channel, come to think of it. Pretzel. Yeah, we're going to I was digging that chip tune, which was getting me into the game, and I kind of want to listen to what gets me in the game. Chip tune it is. I'm an insufferable 80s nerd.
Find a key gen chiptune album on YouTube. All right. Is that the name of the YouTuber who makes them, key gen? Or is that like the name of a type of chiptune album? Key gens are software that generate CD keys and serial numbers for software, but they normally include amazing chiptune music. That music has been spread every. Whoa! I didn't know that. Oh, the sound effect of boom? Yeah. I like big, easier read sound effects. Carl says huge onomatopoeia. Yeah, I like onomatopoeia. And I've been learning a lot. Just for fun, I've been trying to translate this into Japanese to pretend I'm making manga. And I've learned that, like, I already knew that the Japanese had, like, a lot of interesting, unique sound effects. But I, I can't believe, like, what's, how specific it is. Like, there's a, a sound effect specifically for messy hair, right? Whereas we might use the same sound effect for multiple uses. Like rustle is an English sound effect that you could mean like rustling hair or rustling wind or rustling uh, branches. And the Japanese will have 
uh, Boca Boca or something for me messy here. So, I don't know, it's just really interesting to me. I'm learning a lot. Oh, I think, uh, is that pee 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 pee, says Rex Warden? I think I used that one like that recently. Did I spit on my screen? Well, you guys can't see that anyway. You can't see my disgusting saliva all over this. <coughs> I had a little French brandy tonight to help with my headache. Not much. I like, if I'm playing games, I might drink a little bit more. Like, I never like to drink so much that I'm not in control of my actions. I want to be, like, right at the edge where I'm relaxed and maybe a little silly, but I could, like, sober it up if I had to, right? Like, if someone broke into the house, I'd still want to be able to defend myself. But... Oh, used to indicate menacing, more famously in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Wrangle is a word that's kind of a sound effect word, too. Yeah, like words that are verbs. Like, I do that with, like, must must, right? Like, it's a verb, and I don't think hair mussing sounds like the word must, but if you say it, people kind of, like, get the idea. Yeah, for some reason, that music just had me flash back to playing Monsters Incorporated on the Game Boy Color. <laughs> I want to play some RPGs. Like, I'm, I'm excited to have nie nieces and nephews, and so I obviously want to introduce them to, like, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, Paper Mario... Um, Super Mario RPG, right? Like, that kind of stuff. But I want to find, like, some more, like, good story RPGs to basically, like, play with them, but also, like, read them in my storybook voice. I got, uh, Paul Cox's book, uh, Pilgrim's Progress, A Poetic Journey, which is kind of like a, you know, children's poetry edition of the classic Children's Progress. I love Paul Cox. He goes by, uh, Ref Tunes on Twitter. I don't want it to be 100%, I want it to be like 50%. I used to play Mario Odyssey with my nephew quite a bit. That's a really recent game. You gotta like introduce him to some of the old class. Well, Mar Mario is a Odyssey is a great game. I think they really captured the spirit of Mario 64 in that one.
White Knight says he's hoping uh, the nephew will be more open to older games as he gets older. So far, Odyssey and 64 has been his favorite. I mean, those are just like great introductory games, right? Like they're designed for kids. You kind of like explore and fool around a little bit. But have you introduced him to uh, what's the millennial boomer game? Sunshine, yeah, that's the one for all the like Nintendo millennial boomer memes. Sunshine doesn't deserve that much shit. I, I, I mean, I love the uh, Millennial Boomer memes because I kind of feel like a Millennial Boomer and I like self-deprecating food. Yeah, Sunshine's a good game! The only thing I don't like about Sunshine is the blue coin stuff. That was a little annoying. I don't think I ever found all the blue coins. And I looked hard for them. thinking about how to protect my wrist from carpal tunnel syndrome doing this. I have a tablet somewhere that I haven't used in years that is like pressure sensitive and everything, but I don't draw digitally that much. I like the feel of paper in my hand and the pencil pushing against the paper, right? So I feel like I'm always going to have that as part of my process because that's part of my shtick. I guess, I don't know, maybe if I, like, transition to doing, like, really simple cartoons where I wanted it to be really clean, I might consider, like, transitioning to fully digital. I didn't like Sunshine turning into insane abstract platforming puzzles halfway through, says Rex Warden. Well, I thought they were, like, weird puzzles like that, but, like, most of the game would be, like, a normal <coughs> explory thing, and then you would find, <coughs> like, the abstract puzzles in, like, certain levels. And I liked, I liked those sections a lot. Those were the, like, most similar to hardcore old-school... Mario, I thought, and the cool like doo 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 sound effect, soundtrack. <coughs> I had a little more brandy than I probably should have before coloring, maybe, but it took away my headache, so that helps. I mean, can you see the Princess Peach influence anyone? Like, I didn't want to make it too obvious, but it's basically Princess Peach's outfit with, like, daisy gloves and, like, a few extra frills on it. And furries! Furries confirmed! And Jade Smith wannabe gladiator! They exist!
can barely tell, but it helps me feel better about it. Let's clean up that face. Yeah, we don't want no chicken pox, small pox. Heresy! Taking breaks and making sure your fingers and wrists are circulating, I guess, will go a long way to prevent carpal tunnel. Yeah, I don't do this too much. Like, I'm pretty good about taking breaks throughout my process, listening to my Lord of the Rings, take a break, just listen to a few minutes, and then get back to it. I got all the way from the Barrel White to the Council of Elrond and the Fellowship of the Ring. My mom is trying to read the 100 best, number one mom do, she's trying to read the 100 best books of all time, and Lord of the Rings was one of those, so she read Lord of the Rings, and she'd make all these sweet comments like, I love hobbits, it's great. And I haven't read, uh, I haven't read The Lord of the Rings since high school. I read it so I would be ready for the movies, because I had this feeling like if I'm going to see the movies, I want to read the books. I feel like a lot of it went over my head, right, because I was just like a dumb high school student. And every time I've tried to read Lord of the Rings since, i failed because I just get, like, lost at some point. Like, he's a, he's a tough writer, like, lots of dense language. Uh, but I'm, make, I'm making good progress this time, so I think I might actually finish it for the second time in my life. And the dust is everywhere because I use like a like a charcoal stick, and that just like basically lays down a thick layer of dust that gets everywhere. It's I don't use it unless I want like a really big area of dark black. It's a bit comic book related, but a good podcast radio drama is Wolverine the Lost Trail. Finished all two seasons just recently. Wait, okay, so it's a podcast radio drama. So did Marvel put it out as like a, th a thing they did, or is it like a fan thing? I like to do more comic book uh, like performances, like radio adaptations, voice acting kind of stuff. I did a couple for like really great old Walt Kelly comic books from the fifties that are out of copyright. Like the thing is for me, like comics, comic storying gets away with somehow like doing whole audio books of recent Marvel books. I, th I, I think some people have speculated he might have a special deal with Disney Marvel or something to let him do that. Like, I could never get away with that. But I feel like if I went back to old school, like, public domain comics, I could have a lot of fun voice acting some of those. But the question is, like, which one of those are actually good? Right? There are some good ones if you go back there and go hunting. But uh, for every good old school comic you find, there's, like, a hundred crappy ones. But Walt Kelly's a genius. He just makes you feel bad about... Or he makes you feel good, because he's so good, he inspires you. Yeah, we shouldn't make, be negative. He, he doesn't make you feel bad about your drawing. He makes you feel good, because he's so good inspires you to do better. <coughs> oh wait, I want that. Okay, let's take a look gotten foom. Oh, I haven't gotten all the speech balloons yet. I should make sure I get those before I forget. Hello, Stylized Circus Baby. And White Knight says Marvel and Stitcher presented it. So I'm guessing that's like a podcast company and they work together with Marvel, right? 
That's cool. I, I, I'm glad when Marvel does some stuff. Like, that. like I haven't been heart happy with Marvel for the past couple of years, but, you know, anytime they, like, take some initiative and try to, like, capture some of the podcast, YouTube market, go for it. Like, as long as it's not cringy, go for it. I mean, Superman had the radio drama, and that was, like, a big iconic part of his history. Do what you gotta do to introduce people to the characters. <coughs> White Knight's brother told him about the Wolverine podcast. Uh, to be honest, and I like grim dark stuff and radio crime, crime dramas. Yeah, like, radio crime drama, like, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Like, I, I was raised on, like, Christian Adventures in Odyssey. We referenced it in, like, page 12 of the comic that... Uh, I was a big Adventures in Odyssey nerd. Like the fun thing about Adventures in Odyssey is that sometimes, like obviously, like sometimes it's kind of corny, right? Like Christian radio drama. But there's some really good character development in it. A lot of your favorite cartoon voice actors appeared in Adventure in Odyssey at one point. Like I know the voice of Scrooge McDuck was a recurring character in Adventures in Odyssey. They do like some cool, you know, like uh, you know mysteries and all, all kinds of stuff like that. Adventure bad guys and. What's the other thing I was thinking? Oh yeah, the like the, the the thing that was inspiring to me obviously is there's like this whole virtual reality aspect. Like in 1980, uh, the, the the main character figures out a solution to vir virtual reality and he uses it to teach kids about the Bible, right? Right? Like it's, so it's very Christian, but it's like very interesting too that there's such a great example of virtual reality within it. Like years before, I think Nintendo, even before like Nintendo was doing Virtual Boy stuff, they were speculating about it. Fly Fox Pro says there are a ton of really great episodes of Adventure in Odyssey. Yes! Yeah, I knew you were all out there re listening to Adventure in Odyssey in the car, listening to Adventure in Odyssey at home while, dry, uh, while drawing. And the, the cartoon they did was really good. I thought that was like Disney afternoon quality animation they had for the Adventure in Odyssey cartoon. Not bad at all. And pretty subtle. Like, you know, they'd have, like, the moment where they'd have the characters pray, right? But it wouldn't be, like, cringy. It would be... It, it was an adventure story about Christian characters. Uh, but the, the Christian aspect of it didn't stop the adventure and drama side of it from being really engaging. <coughs> I gotta see if I still have my Adventures in Odyssey subscription to listen to it as a podcast. What I really need to do is renew my subscription, download all the episodes, and then just start, like, doing podcasts on The Adventures in Odyssey, like, breaking it down. Because I've, I've noticed a few, like, other, like, Christian VeggieTale history YouTubers, right? So there definitely is, like, a YouTube market for it. And I think you could really talk about, like, you know, good character development and drama through it. And definitely good, like, sound design quality, too. Like, I'd aspire to that level of quality if I was doing, like, an audiobook version of my comic, for example. When I was living in Oakland, I listened to a lot of the Shadow episodes, several detective episodes in suspense. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Superman show on tape. Yeah, I got that at the library, and I listened to that. And the fun thing about the Superman show radio drama is I think that introduced Kryptonite, but Kryptonite was different. Originally, originally, like, Kryptonite wouldn't kill Superman. It would just render him immobile, and the criminals still couldn't kill him. So I, I, I vividly remember, like, the criminals immobilized him and locked him in a room, and they tried, like, all these things, like, shooting him, drowning him, and they finally figured out that the only way to kill Superman once he's affected by kryptonite is to starve him to death. So he, he can't die from asphyxiation. He doesn't need oxygen, but he does need food. Okay. Whew. How am I doing? I don't want to clean up Marth Martha's face because that'd be whitewashing. So problematic. Uh, I do want to clean up the dresses, though. <coughs> I would totally dig Odyssey content. Focus on the family put a lot of effort into their audio production. Yeah, it was a quality production. You gotta give them credit for that. I like that I've somehow attracted, like, all the Adventures in Odyssey nerds to my channel. Like, I reached out through the internet to all of you, and you all came coming... <laughs>
Oh yeah, they did adaptations of Narnia and the Screw Tape Letters. I've heard the Narnia one that was really good, but I haven't heard Screw Tape Letters. I have the Marvel Comics adaptation of Screw Tape Letters, which is kind of interesting. But like one of the things is like C.S. Lewis clearly had like kind of like a Nazi inspiration for the devils in Screw Tape Letters, and Marvel just decided to like make them like ugly devils, right? And I, so I kind of feel like they missed the point. Like part of the whole point of the devils in Screw Tape Letters is that they're smart alecky bureaucrats, right? Like, they think they're better than everyone else, or they like, they kind of like get a sadistic pleasure out of, like, owning someone else. So they're not like big scary demons out of paint medieval paintings or anything. It's not like, what is it? Uh, Street Fighter sound effects. Munchie Sanchu is here, he's testing, and I can see your comments. So, Munchie Sanchu linked me to a very interesting Japanese propaganda video and instantly disappeared. So we're not sure if I accidentally banned him or if YouTube banned him for linking to Japanese propaganda. Like, that's the ultimate weeb sin. Like, anime are already on thin ice, but anime, uh, old school Imperial Japan stuff, like the Google, the Google robot lizards are going to ban hammer you hard. Somebody on Twitter told me Pewds likes Yuko Mishima. I don't know who that is. You're still banned. Okay, so it must have been YouTube. Wow. Don't... I mean, it's a, it's a historically interesting cartoon, and I made you a moderator, which obviously means I trust you. Like, like I, I'm mad that the YouTube Google lizards didn't even give me, like, the choice of whether to ban you or not. That's really annoying to me. I should be... I should have the power to, to ban Punchy Sonic Chew, not the robot lizards. Well, I archived it on BitChute, so if YouTube takes it down, it'll be on BitChute under Cartoon History. 
Google hates spe people speaking against their narrative in any capacity. They hate anything remotely historical that could be offensive. Like, uh, hey, teenagers, did you know what happened in 1940? Oh, no, you're not allowed to know that. Like, if you do a history video about it, you must clearly be a Nazi. There, what other explanation could there be for you talking about World War II, you crypto nerdsy? <laughs> uh, good ol' YouTube. I have like a story <coughs> roughly penned out that I haven't finished yet, where it's just like these baby, creepy baby furries that are like the words of an evil Google empire. And I thought it was like a little too creepy, like people would misunderstand the intent, but like the whole point is like, people becoming more and more subservient to these creepy Amazon Google corporations over time. You don't even get to see comment deleted by Google moderation team. And you, oh, that's like Orwellian. So you don't even know if they delete it. Evil, evil. Go follow me on BitChute, everybody. The only thing I don't like about BitChute is kind of like the unfortunate name, right? Like it sounds like a bad word. And like, I am all for bad people giving bad people a platform to say bad things that being said like it is so creepy anytime you log onto bitshoot like you'll see porn you will see like creepy dragon ball z fetish art that i didn't need to see you'll see all the nazis of course and all right i better not stop talking about that or youtube will instantly ban me just for alluding to it yeah so like i don't want bitshoot to ban anybody i kind of just wish they wouldn't like shove it right in my timeline at the front, right? Like, kids are going to come to your channel. Like, don't necessarily put that on the front page, you know? Put, like, PewDiePie on the front page or something. Or maybe they don't want to, I don't know, maybe they don't want to, like, even assert any control over that. It's just whatever random pornographic thing goes up, that's what is on the front page of BitChute. All right, that's what they want to do. I don't own it. I don't own a website. I don't know what goes into it. I was telling people what map meant in relation to certain reprehensible people and Google per Yeah, yeah, like you can't explain to people what the bad thing is or they think you're doing the bad thing. Context? What is that? Our robot algorithms will determine context. Thank you very much. 2020 is going to be lit. Google's going to be banning stuff right and left. Yeah, like those... Uh, Punchy says you can't explain what a, uh, a MAP is, but you can actually upload MAP contents. By the way, we're not for kids here on the number one Marmaduke fan show. Parents, you should not be letting your kids watch this show. Right? So there's like this creepy fe fetish thing where like people will take like Elsa from Frozen and have her like pregnant or have you like scraping her feet or something and it's these always have like ridiculously high view counts right so it's obvious the kids are looking for Frozen and finding this and getting weirded out like I have a feeling that's gonna be like a creepy like psychological scarring thing one day like someone's gonna make I, I should do this I should copyright this idea like the next Five Nights at Freddy's thing the genius of Five Nights at Freddy's was that he figured out that people were scared of Chuck E. Cheese characters someone's got to make like a horror game about evil like disney clickbait fe fetish games that target kids that could be you could have like like the satanic element gradually creeping in as you as you like help more disney princesses like remove their cancerous tumors or whatever it is yeah it's a sad thing says jeb jam I mean, I'm in trouble because I do like uh, fairy tale video. I haven't done a fairy tale video since Copa, but I want to. I'm such a completionist. I want to finish the fairy tale series I started, so I'm probably going to just label those as children's videos, just because I know YouTube will anyway, and that way people won't lose their comments. They won't get deleted. All right, where are we at? Let's take a look. Are the speech balloons done? The speech balloons are done. Her face is done. 
Let's do, uh, let's do her hands. Cuddles is meowing. Put, uh, yeah, put bit shoot together as one word and find the swear. Uh, Stylized says, you know, FNAF Mar, me too. Yeah, so I, I've actually never played any of the FNAF games, but I saw a video go viral, and like I went to Chuck E. Cheese as a kid, so I felt creeped out, and I thought, this is gonna become a thing. So I immediately got like out a pencil and paper and I drew the characters in a cute little chibi style. And that was my first artwork ever where I sold a bunch of them. Yeah. So I don't know, like it's gone in a weird direction. I feel like the first game has a, had a really cool creepy vibe. And then after that, he started making like, he, he started letting like the lore about FNAF take over the series to the point where like Scott, even Scott Cawthon doesn't know what, what the lore is or he jokes about how he didn't really intend all that originally, but then Game Theory uh, suggested all of those crazy ideas. Like, I love the vibe of the first game. I'd love to capture something like that, where there's just, like, a really subtle, creepy vibe to it. Like, I wouldn't even want jump scares. I want a FNAF game that has no jump scares in it, but just basically just unsettles you the entire time, as, like, these vaguely creepy things sneak up out after you, but they never hurt you. Just gotta teach myself a little programming, right? In my spare time. <coughs> I mean, Stylized Circus Baby, your, your name obviously comes from a FNAF character. Is that one of the characters from the game, or is that one of your, like, original, like, fan characters from FNAF? her. I've been a huge fan of FNAF since 2014. Yep, I feel like that's when it first started going viral. Yeah. Remember staying up, watching Markiplier play it at night and feeling all creeped out by it. And Game Theory had his whole cool... Like, his initial theory about it was very different than what emerged over time. That's the other thing, is I kind of like when something in its, is in its early stages and people haven't really figured it out yet and there are all these different ideas for it. I'm going to leave that shadow there because I actually think it kind of looks cool. It's like a cat shadow is casting on her from above. I kind of want to try to find Scott Cotton's version of Pilgrim's Progress and see if I can play that because I have a feeling like there's a lot of interest in Scott Cotton. Oh, I'm sure somebody has played uh, his version of Pilgrim's Progress because of all the FNAF uh, mania, but I kind of like to go through that and see how bad it was, whether it's any good at all. I know that was the game that vaguely inspired him to create FNAF. I, I love his success story, too. Like, any success story about a guy who's, like, at the end of his rope and never had a big success, just tapping into something cultural and making a big mega hit. Like, I love that. I love that kind of I love that kind of thing. Stylized Circus Baby was one of the characters I found, and I was intrigued by the design. Her name is Aquitix, and he first added Stylized Funtime Foxy in the Steam Workshop. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I, I actually don't know what that is. So is the Steam Workshop, like, uh, like does he do, like add assets there or something of, like, extra characters? Because I know he did that game where you, like, build a pizzeria, and that was, like, the conclusion to the series, unless he's done six games since I stopped paying attention. Gosh, he cranked out so many of those. That was the other weird thing. It was like, just as it was exploding, he would have another game come out. Boom.
I can finish this all tonight, like what, before 10? I'm not gonna finish this before 10, Never mind. I like to reward myself with a video game if I finish the page that week, but I kinda wanna like, I'd rather do like a second page tomorrow morning than play a video game, right? Like really reward myself once I get some good progress. I wanna get to the fighting already, right? And I wanna get to see Akira. I can't wait to show you guys Akira and I'm doing all of this like character development and world building. I just wanna hop to it. Akira's gonna be so dope, I love drawing him. Quitix is, oh, the pronunciation, is actually pronounced Q-tips, but with the letter X instead of the letter S at the end. What is this thing called Akira? Says Munchy. Well, you drew it. You drew it, Munchy. Akira's the monkey. I've seen your first draft of your fan art of Akira, and I haven't seen your second draft yet. Man, I should get some of my chiptune music on Pretzel, see if I can make some money. Find all the revenue streams I can. Be gone, mustache. I don't want this six-year-old girl having whiskers. Be gone! That looks better. All right. So are we done with that whole area? I think that all looks good. Let's get up to her face here. Akira, Akira, Akira. What's this thing called Akira? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, it's a reference. I don't know it. Is it a reference to the... I, I got the DVD of the movie Akira, because that's like one of the legendary all-time great anime movies that everyone has watched and everyone is inspired by that I still haven't gotten to, right? And I've got like all the alternate dub versions of it. I'm just waiting to sit down and watch it. But I want to actually concentrate. It's harder for me to watch something I really want to watch than to watch something dumb that I just put on the background, because I can always like multitask on art while I'm watching something dumb. But if I'm watching something really good and legendary, I actually want to pay attention to it, right? So that means I've got to pay it full atten full undivided attention art analysis mode. So probably as a reward. I'm gonna try to like get three pages ahead. And once I'm three pages ahead, then I'll feel like I can do some more things like uh, you know, anime reviews without worrying about getting I do not want to fall behind. I have to commit to at least a minimum of a page a week to keep making steady progress. Kaneda and Tatsuo are the most famous, of course. It's a famous line of Akira. All right, I figured it was something from that. Because that's like the most famous Akira 
And then, like, the second most famous Akira would be Akira Toriyama, which was obviously my inspiration. I want to try to find a good version of the Journey to the West, too, because I've heard, like, summaries of it, but there's obviously a strong Son Goku inspiration to Akira, and I actually want to know... Like, I've taken literal inspiration from his powers, but I actually want to know what his story is, right? Not necessarily so I can take inspiration from it, but just so I can know, like... I want to know what it is so I can decide how much I want to reference it. Like, some of Akira's powers are going to be very uniquely his own and not just Son Goku's, but it's nice to know. Son uh, Wukong's, but it's nice, to, it's nice to know. <coughs> Journey of the West is great. Okay, so what version of it did you read? Uh... Uh, the metal, because I feel like there must be like multiple translations. Like, is there a really good translation of it? Is there a good audible version of it? Like, my my main introduction to it was uh, a what's it? American Born Chinese by uh, Jin Yun Lang, Jin Luen Yang. That's it. Kind of like how we added like the Christian elements to it. I've, got, I've still got to do a video on that. I got to talk about like all the Bible quotes that he uh, put in American Born. Chinese. It's more obvious in Boxer Saints. Like, I actually much prefer Boxer Saints to American Born Chinese because American Born Chinese is really good, but it's a little bit like, hey, I'm going to do something avant garde and different, right? And uh, Boxer Saints is a little bit more straightforward, which I actually admire. So that's one of my favorites I've read. Monkey is a total asshole, but also the best. He's kind of a jerk, Sung Goku, I mean. Yeah, and you know, I've got a little vibe of that. of like, I actually hate monkeys, personally. I don't find them, they always creep me out. But cartoon monkeys are kind of cute. So my goal with Akira was to kind of like give them like the cuteness of a cartoon monkey, but have him be a little bit of an asshole. <laughs> Which is great because then he, he like contrasts with Jane, who's kind of sweet and uh, flawed, right? Like it, it's, it's the Beauty and the Beast story all over again. Like the, the fun of taming the beast is the challenge of like getting him to pay attention to you. It's like the feminine versus the masculine. So yeah, go Akira is like a little bit of a boy boyish little jerk. I love it. I love it. <coughs> I'm going to leave a little bit of this here cuz it's actually like a nice shadow effect, but I'm just going to soften it slightly. I couldn't remember because I read a translation in my public library in the seventh grade. Interesting. Like, yeah, I'm sure there are multiple translations, right? And I kind of want one that's easier to read, maybe like gives me cultural notes on what's going on so I understand like the Kung Fu and Chinese philosophy I don't know about. The other thing I like is the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, right? Which uh, is the inspiration of several anime and video games. I used to play those with my older brother and those were kind of fun. Beaten up massive armies and dynasty warriors and samurai warriors. Okay, that is an underdrawing, so I'm actually going to soften that significantly. <laughs> Still got, got them coughs. going to leave the dust on that background because I want Jane's face to pop forward a little bit, but I will clean up her arm a tiny bit. ROTK is brilliant too. Romance of the Three Kingdoms, yeah. Because it's almost like a novel, right? Like it was a historical period of Chinese history, but like we, we got it through almost like a romantic novelization version of it, or am I just making things up based on false memory? Oops, that's all right. That's why I have separate layers. I 
they used a little bit of Sean Gordon Murphy uh, fingerprint marking to soften some of the transitions from black to white. And I like it. I'm going to do that more. Fingerprints everywhere. Okay, the top part. Uh, I'm happy with all that. It is essentially a historical novel, says Munchie Sanchi. Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Okay. I'd love to play some Dynasty Warriors. That's like a great relax game. Just like stupidly like beat up a million guys. Metal's trying to remember how literal the translation he read in high school is. Yeah, like, I don't need it to... I'm not, like, a scholar, right? So I don't need, like, the most literal translation ever. Like, if they modernize some of the English for me to make it easier, I'm fine with that. I went poking around. There's a children's book version of it, but I kind of want to know what happened, right? Like, I like old-school stories because they're often weird, and they don't have the conventions of modern stories. Like, fairy tales are the best example, right? Where they're, like, murdering the witches in brutal ways. because they didn't tell stories the way we do. They, they, liked, uh, they liked them some justice and punishment a little bit more. All those Buddhist descriptions of hell. How much of that do I... I want to soften all of that because I hate dust. So. I'm going to go ahead and make this 100%. Get nice and close. Crypt of the Necrodancer is always nice music to have in the background when doing something. Yeah. Okay, now, that's a game, but with, like, a music theme, theme, and I know that they have, like, a Zelda, like, downloadable thing, too. I don't know, I just gotta, like, sit on my Switch. The thing is, I my attitude is I reward myself by playing Switch when I've done literally everything else, and I love to give my... Like, if I'm done with, like, my main art, I love to give myself little extra homework projects, like, let's do a YouTube video on this, right? But when I... I've decided, like, this year I'm gonna try to, like, relax a little bit more, and, you know, I'll still live stream and put it on YouTube, right? So it's still... it's kind of counts as work, yeah. But on, like, Friday or Saturday, if I'm completely done with my page and I'm ahead, then I'll play a little game. I've still gotta beat Mega Man 8. I got through the first big chunk of that already. Cadence of Hyrule still hasn't gotten it because of rhythm games aren't my thing. Oh, okay, so that's a Crypt of the Necrodancer. Cadence of Hyrule is a different game than Crypt of the ne Necrodancer. Okay, it's like a download. You play the beat of the song to get through the game. All right. But I can't just, like, let it play, obviously, right? I've got to actually, like, play it. Press space to win automatically. Because we believe that games should be absolutely easy to beat and have no challenge whatsoever. Hashtag games journalist. Blue check mark.
I'm sad when I can't beat a game I could beat when I was eight or something. Like, oh no, have I peaked already? Is it all downhill from here? I can't beat Mario Brothers anymore. <laughs> Toriyama sometimes somewhat switched the personalities of Sung Wukong and Tan Tang Sanzang, the monk, when making Goku and Bulma. And that becomes uh, because he wanted Goku to be the selfish one to center the morals. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Bulma's kind of a jerk. I love his little drawing of Goku meeting Song Wukong, too. What a great style. I love his simple little cartoony style. Boob! Clean up around the boob! And the butt! It's boobs and butts here on our family-friendly Christian YouTube channel. <laughs> Munchie doesn't like Goku or Bulma. I mean, like, early <coughs> Goku is just kind of like an innocent wild boy, right? Like Tarzan meeting civilization for the first time. Is, uh, what is it? Is Dragon Ball Z a bridge? Did it ever get any better? Because I feel like the first season was tremendous. Loved it. That was all the rage when I was in college. And I just felt like they got really, really repetitive. Like, everything was, like, about how this is gay professional wrestling. That was always the joke for some of the later seasons. So I've stopped watching. I still dig uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! a bridge because that was kind of like, I like pioneers. I like people who figure out a new thing and kind of like make it into a thing so I still watch a little Karibo uh, a lot but I haven't caught up in that in a few months cell games are funny hurrah for boobs and butts is called <laughs> amateur hour yeah Jane's shy about it but the other characters they're not going to be shy about it we wouldn't appreciate how modest and Christian Jane is if there weren't a few other characters who would show off in contrast Like, notice how her body language is very closed, and Martha's always, like, stretching and stretching her stuff a little bit. Martha's a little bit more confident, a little bit more worldly, a little bit more relaxed. You want visual contrast and behavior contrast. Okay. I want to clean up. I mean, it's very subtle. Like, you'll notice if you, like, pull out a magnifying glass and look close. Which Akira dub do you have? Okay, so Munchie, I got the DVD that says it has both. And I want to watch the Japanese first and then watch both dubs. Like, my experience has been if I didn't watch the older dub when I was a little kid, I usually prefer the newer dub because, like, they have cleaner audio or something, and people who watch, like, the old dub when they were kids have kind of, like, a romantic attachment to it. But I kind of want to, like, watch Japanese first, then watch both of them, and do, like, a general, like, which would I recommend you watch as a fresh, brand new fan of it? I think it was, like, the 25th anniversary edition or something. Some anniversary. The oldest dub is the best, says Punchy Sonichu. Well, I will give you my unbiased opinion on the oldest dub, for sure. Kanada! I love Harry Partridge's uh, American Akira video. Okay, where are we at? We are down to the last little bit of cleanup. I'm going to save, come to think of it.
New dub is more accurate and easier to understand. Old dub has a much stronger emotional core. Yeah, and I like... See, when I'm watching a dub, like, yeah, it's nice if it, you know, translates the Japanese nicely, but it's more important that you understand and get it in English, right? Like, I don't need to know what the Japanese pun is. Uh, and it, I even like when the dub departs a little bit to make it more fun. To me, it's sort of like when Peter Jackson adapts Lord of the Rings, and yeah, he changes the book, of course, but he changes the book so that he can make the movie more fun. Like, if you can change the dub to make it more silly and fun, like Team Rocket in uh, Pokemon are obviously like a product of the dub. If it was a hard translation, I don't know if Team Rocket would be quite as fun as Jesse and James are in the four kids dub. <laughs> I love Jesse and James so much. It was so fun to rewatch that when I was a nanny. I'm going to introduce that one to the nephews and nieces. They're going to know... I, I actually want to watch all of Pokemon because I'm not a Gen 1-er. Like, I can tell the new animation for Pokemon is really, really good. But I kind of want my nephews and nieces to experience it in the order they came out, right? Because it doesn't have, like, a long, ongoing story or anything. But I feel like they'll appreciate it more if they can see, Oh, wow, look at how it changed over the years. It, used to be just 150 Pokemon, and now it's 1,000 Pokemon. And you can't catch them all, or whatever it is on the Switch. I, I stayed out of that Zoomer fight. I prefer never to see another dub again, but in my opinion, the best dubs were Gunsmith's Cats, Ranma 1 Half, Ghost Stories, and I guess Cowboy Bebop. Everyone talks about Ghost Stories. I've just seen clips of Ghost Stories, and I know I want to watch the dub of that, because that, that just looks like classic. I love the dub they did for, like, the new Yu-Gi-Oh! movies. Like, you can tell... They have watched Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged series, and they've realized, okay, these dubs are kind of corny, so let's lean into how corny it is, and let's, let's like, play up the silliness a little bit. So the Japanese version is played a lot more straight, and they'll, like, like, like it literally sound like they ha they would hire Little Karibo to write the gags for the English dub of, like, Bonds Beyond Time or whatever it was. I really enjoyed that. And I wasn't into Yu-Gi-Oh! at all as a kid. I was only I only got into it because of Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged, and the Evil X was super into Yu-Gi-Oh! So we watched it together, and now I kind of like really respect it, right? Like a really like like it takes it would take a lot of work to make a card game interesting. Ranma one half, yeah. I mean, I really respect the artist. I haven't sat down for Ranma one half or uh, what is it? Inuyasha. Inuyasha was that long, famous one. She did. Oh, are we done? We might be done. Noise. Okay, I want to soften that a little bit. Hey, come on, brush. There we go. I want kind of like a little bit more of a visual separation there. Okay. I think that's good. Now it's lettering time. Ranma was the series that got me into anime. Oh, I've seen I've seen the Metropolis dub. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I mean, anything Osamu Tetsuka like Osamu Tetsuka was like a genius. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna like clean up some parts here. different kind of brush to bury it, like drawing box. Whoa, okay, we need that more transparent, smaller. We need that much more transparent and much smaller.
Has Marm read the manga? Which one? Like, Akira? I haven't. And I actually kind of want to read the... I don't know, like, people see the anime is so famous, but I know the library has the manga. And every time I've read the manga before the anime, I've been glad I have, because then I get to think about how they adapted it into anime format. And when I'm reading, I kind of, like, think about it differently. So, like, when I'm watching anime, I'm just, like, absorbing the pretty pictures. But when I'm reading the manga, I'm, like, thinking about it. Thinking, like, oh, wow, like, Arthur's doing this. <laughs> <coughs> right? want that Power Princess Dress Up 3 to be nice and legible, so make it nice and bright. Akira 2, but mostly Ranma. No, I haven't read any Ranma. I think I read, like, the first couple volumes of Inuyasha. Uh, I couldn't find Ranma. Like, if it wasn't at my library, there was, like, a good chance I wouldn't read it. Maybe I could request it in her library loan form, you know? Fun fact, Fluttershy from MLP is canonically a, canonically a fan of Ronmo one half. How'd they wangle that? Like, I know they do a lot of, like, fun little references and stuff. writer. Oh, Rex says, I hate that that show was corrupted by its unhinged fan base. My Little Pony, right? Like, I feel like they did a good job, like, paying homage to the adult fans, but still, like, keeping it for little girls. I mean, you can't, you can never stop perversion on the internet, because the internet's a very perverted place. So you just gotta, like, nope out of that, and... I don't know, like, enjoy kids' things for what they are and don't let anybody ruin it for you, is my attitude. I've been recollecting some manga slowly from half-price books, recollecting. I already have some Ranma, Inuyasha, and Black Cat. There are a few on my list, but you see the same volumes a lot. Yeah, I think, like, the same things are popular in, like, the English market, so they really emph emphasize those. Clean up Power Princess, and I think I'm done with cleanup. What about her face, actually? Yeah, there's some whiskers there. Let's clean that up. Charcoal dust. Charcoal dust. Gotta find all the charcoal dust balls. Da da da. <laughs> Dragon Ball, gotta find them all. But it's charcoal dust. Nice beard. 
Yeah, that looks better. <coughs> okay, so, yeah, Rex, you said that Fluttershy is a fan of Ranma, so I need sauce. I need source. Where do we see the evidence that Fluttershy is a fan of Ranma? This is very important for us to know. Oh, let's clean up Power Princess. Power Princess. Oh, no. Uh, when she saw it, she tried to Google the episode and just got a bunch of terrible, degenerate garbage on the internet. Don't Google it. Need an Inquisition. <laughs> By the Pope! Deus Volt! Horses are for riding into the Holy Land to retake Jerusalem! Not for sexy stuff! Metal wants to collect all of Rumika Takahashi's work. I mean, she's like a legend, right? Like a badass, cool mom of the manga world. Like, for me, that's what uh, Kyoko Hikawa is, because she's just so freaking good at uh, compositions and layouts, right? So I've actually collected a Japanese thing of hers that's never been translated that I want to chit-chat about, but I haven't found time to, like, do it yet. What got censored? I don't know. This what got zen censored? <laughs> yeah. Cause, 
Google would censor that because they don't understand how humor works. Like, like some poor Japanese artist did a Deus Volt meme, and everyone was saying, You're so problematic! What about all those people from the 1200s whose feelings are gonna hurt, right? Like, the point of the Deus Volt meme is that it's a silly history meme. It's making fun of how serious and crazy the Crusaders were and how intense and fo focused they were. Like, it, it, it's asking you to imagine what it would be like to be them back then and how cool it would be to have like a catapult and to want to go retake the Holy Land, right? Like it's not it's not meant to be taken seriously as I literally want to go on a crusade today, right? Like come on internet, relax. Relax. It's okay internet. We're not going to die because of the jokes. It will all be okay. <laughs> It is a crusade for making memes about it. I know that Lum is that bikini alien girl by the same artist. So it was like Lum, and then Ranma one half, and then Inuyasha. Good variety. Oh, everyone's saying bless you. Gazunite. Use of the coin sound effect in there, chip tune artist. All anime is problematic. You gotta get over the problematic lenses and just enjoy it for what it is. <laughs> So we got Power Princess, we got some of the hearts. Yeah, 
Everyone's talking about Ranma, which I don't know anything about. I'm not enough of a Gen X weeb. Wait, 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 wait. Make sure I'm drawing on the right layer. Make sure I'm drawing on the left, drawing on the root layer. Drawing on the right layer. Is this chip tune? I want to pop out those fellas a little bit more. Is my laptop frozen? Let's go, dudes. Here we go. Don't freeze on me, baby boy. Baby girl. Baby Z laptop. I can see a live-action version of Jane Wanna Be Gladiators, a five-star movie. It'd be cool as an animation. Yeah, I'd obviously, like, I'd prefer an animation because I'm such a cartoon buff. I'd be totally open to a live-action version of Jane Smith Wanna Be Gladiator, though. Too wholesome. Would never be picked up by Hollywood. Yeah, that's why I gotta, like, make the Japanese edition. Try to get, like, the... Hey, Japanese nationals, I'm a weeb. Please make my Western cartoon into an anime... <laughs> It's happened before. There have been Western, uh, Eastern collaborations. I mean, uh, One Punch Man started out as a, uh, webcomic, right? And any webcomic can go viral. Oh, I think all the time about, like, what, what Studio Ghibli doing Jane Smith Wannabe Gladiator, uh, Korean animation doing Jane Smith Wannabe Gladiator, yeah. How we doing? So I've done Power Princess and the Hearts. I want to do that heart up there, and then I want to do Dress Up. 
It's weird to see Chinese stuff get Japanese shows. Yeah, because they normally like just pirate whatever they want, right? <coughs> <coughs> I also like seeing J Chinese characters show up in Japan because it's obvious like they find them kind of like romantic and interesting and foreign, right? I essentially want an anime adaptation of my comic. It's already <coughs> got a lot of crossover themes with Shonen to probably get picked up uh, if already popular or otherwise is the metal. Yeah, I translate it in Japanese, you know? You never know. <laughs> Try to get one of those uh, studios to take notice of you. Notice me, senpai! <laughs> Studio. One's art is awful, but his writing is awesome. Is that the One Punch Man guy? I mean, the thing is, like, if you have, like, a goofy style or a, a goofy character, then, like, bad art can actually be, like, a really good fit for it. Like, a realistic character might... That's why they kind of preserved his goofy look sometimes for comic beats, is he had this goofy, straightforward look in the original webcomic. One of my, like, guilty pleasures is World War Blue, because it's so bad, and it's... I love it so much at the same time. Like, what if famous video games were all, like, represented as people in a fantasy adventure, and Sonic Game Gear was basically, like, a Shonen Jump protagonist? It's so ridiculous and fun. Like, if you're an old game head, you might get a kick out of it. It's, like, really fan service -y. Like, uh, like... B beyond PG-13 fan servicey, but it's got one of the best explanations of why communism is bad, or socialism is bad, that I've ever seen. So, I kind of want to take that anti-socialism scene and dub that, because it's so interesting. Technically terrible, composition strong. Yeah, exactly! Like, just because your art is terrible doesn't mean your art is wrong for what it is, right? Like, a simple little gesture sketch could actually communicate a lot. That's one of my favorite things about comics is, like, like Da Vinci couldn't do comics. Da Vinci did, like, 50 paintings in his life, right? Like, and a comic book probably has more than 50 pictures in it. So, like, Da Vinci was brilliant for what he did, but to do comics, you kind of, you kind of have to, like, be a little faster than a Renaissance master would be. Another piece of media that shows why communism is bad is The Extraordinary Adventures of Ordinary Boy, says Fly Fox Pro. Oh, we're almost there. Dress is the last word. Let's save. It's 9.43, gang. I've started. I'm not quitting until I finish 100%. <coughs> I want next week's art ready to go.
our princess D. Here we go. <coughs> Power Princess Dress Up 3! Alright, not much dialogue on this page. I'm gonna wrap this up quick. Oh, I wanna add some elements of color. Oh, her face is kind of messy. I want to fix that. Yeah, I want to get those freckles away. Okay, well, I can do that as a second layer. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. I imagine that the evil corporation in the future has bought out Nintendo, which is why there's this suspiciously Princess Peach-like dress in their game. Lore, deep lore.
More anime and western cartoons I haven't watched.
from Hip Hopper just mentioned Pikachu. Okay, dude. You're a real gangsta. You're Pikachu. When she saw it, she asked if I have uh, Kung Flu. Nope, didn't eat any bats.
when she saw it, she asked, where would Christian fall? I mean, like, Christian has a childlike style, which is why Sanchu went viral. Like, I feel like if Christian just, like, learned to be mature and not yell at people, and he tried to be, like, a little original, like, not rip off something that is copyrighted by someone else, I feel like he could get, like, a nice following doing silly, you know, fun, fun, crazy comics, right? Like, whatever his imagination has him do.
Black and white with sparse colors of Sin City. Virtue City. <laughs> Family friendly Christian YouTube content city. I mean, eventually I'd like to come back and color the whole thing, but my thought is there are a couple things where it'll be easier to communicate if I have color. So I'm going to color the important things. And there's also kind of like a Wizard of Oz vibe where like her normal life has like a very down-to-earth vibe to it. And I kind of want... I want some like expressive color when she goes into the virtual world. So it's kind of like, whoa, I'm in virtual reality. Everything's crazy and different from my normal life, right? Like I want a strong visual contrast between normal life and... Uh, crazy virtual gaming life. Kind of like uh, how IRL did. I don't, I don't know if my review of that has gone public yet. Like, it's a little SJW, but IRL is, is quite good art, and I was really interested in its themes of, uh, what's it? It's themes of uh, gaming as a kind of like character building exercise. Slight inspiration for Jane Smith Wannabe Gladiator. Took it in a different direction.
Okie dokie. What have I got to do? Color the hair. Jean's hair is pretty dark. Darker than that. I mean, the black will make it look pretty dark, so this is almost like a highlight. The metal's gonna have a joke where the characters know, subtly know that their world is black and white. There's a punch out noise.
What you chatting about, chat? Carl's talking about how his characters don't live in a world with limited color. He just doesn't color that much. <laughs> Whoa, people are talking about YouTube purges. I was sad about that. Like, there was an anime purge, and then some channel showed up, obviously, to replace all the clips that YouTube had purged, like Retro Crush or something. Like, someone was just waiting, saying, soon YouTube will purge all the anime clips, and then I will swoop in, and I will find a way to monetize the, the famous anime clips. Princess dress up free.
Man, people are just chatting about weeb stuff. So we have a nice theme of pink and blue for Jane and Martha. Now let's do her hair. So I see back hair is kind of like reddish, <coughs> pretty close to neutral. You know, I like classic blue comic book hair. I'll make it pretty subtle so it's not too obvious. But...
what I drop in racer. Okay. Ooh. People are heading out. It's a, it's almost 11. Yeah, I'm close to wrapping this up. One last person to do, and I think it'll look good. I haven't even lettered yet. How about that? Let's make her a proper redhead. Not a redhead. We're gonna make her a dirty blonde. Oh boy, see him white cake color. Here we go. Oh, we're gonna watch a blue bar fill, aren't we? What if I flatten it and then do see him white cake color? Can I do that? People are mad at Kotaku, and Kotaku deserves it. Why is that? style blending options. Oh, okay, I don't want color burn, I want multiply. There we go. Oh, that's much better. I gotta mark this. I'll do it later, I'm lazy. See like crown hair. <laughs> Gotta remember to keep this and not flatten it so I can come back and edit later. That would be a tragedy if I flattened by accident.
So we've got red, blue, green, yellow. Kind of orangey colors. I want a purple in here, like a bad guy color. Okay. I think we got it. Where am I at? Let's go ahead and uh, letter. Save. How's it going, chat? 
Stylized Circus Baby says, I love the color. Thank you. People are chatting YouTube and tech stuff and computer systems.
Alright, we done? Who's still here? Four people still here? Comic Sans? No, it's gel pen. Uh, it's not quite, a, it's not as bad as Comic Sans. I wanted something that had like a real simple hand-drawn look and gels, gel pens seem to have like a good fit to it. I don't know, I'm open to suggestions if people know of a really good, like simple, like, I, I don't mind if it's a little childlike, right? Like I don't want it to be too clean. Oh wait, that you guys are talking about your computers. I thought you were talking about the gel pen. All right, I want to go ahead and show you guys, since we're coming to the end, uh, I want to show you the Alterna format. Alterna format. Make sure this is saved. Let me get rid of these. I screwed up one of my pages somehow, which annoys me, so I'll just have to go in and fix it later. I'm gonna do cleanup anyway, perfectionistically tweak everything. Is my font online? Yes, it's on DA fonts, and I had to find one that was commercial use allowed. That's the one tricky thing, is some of them are free, but they're not free if you want to, like, sell something, so you gotta watch it. Okay, so I've saved this. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this one, and I'll just come into... I'll save the Photoshop document separately. Flatten that, and then keep the tech separate, because Alterna likes to have that as a separate layer. Power Princess Dress Up 3! I want to say that in the Smash Brothers voice. Power Princess Dress Up 3! With an echo. Can't paste it. Great. Hello, Philip Hutterer. Thank you for joining us. I am almost done. If you want to look at my font, says Rex Ward, it's called Man Gauge. I use you can use it for whatever you like. Sweet, is it on DA font? Stream is borking a bit. Uh, a throat cold. See, I'd use that for like Akira's roars and stuff. Like if it has like a good little grunge effect to it. <clears throat> Let me look at that name again. Rex Warden made the font Mangage. Stream quality is normal again. Yeah, I bet it was just like slowly Photoshop slowing up everything. I gotta delete all the old layers too. Almost there, home stretch. Just gotta shrink it. <coughs> Ooh boy. <coughs> Come on, baby.
There it is. All right. Okay, let's save things before I screw up. Page 14. No image compression. Undo the flatten here. Save that. And close that out. show you alternative format. So this is alternative format. I understand they have a smaller live area but a larger safe area than most companies. <coughs> Which reminds me real avant-garde comic book page at the moment. <laughs> oh, everything is slow and thinking. Comic is looking nice so far, says Philip Hutterer. Thank you. U font and F fonts have man gauge. Sweet. Well, thank you, Rex. I will do a shout out to you if I can find a good use for that. Like, I want it to fit with what the characters say, but I'm sure I'll find uses. Headache's almost gone. Come on, let's finish it. I don't like that arrow at the bottom.
Yeah, we'll stick with it. Save. <coughs> Home stretch. Hey, Philip Hutter has a few songs. Nice. <coughs> All right, Philip Hutter. I, I'll be happy to take you up on that. I'm hap always looking for new music. I'll link to your channel. I'll link to your SoundCloud, wherever you want. <laughs> FI Studio and Flex. Okay. Yes. Uh, tweet me at Jane and at Jane and Akira. Uh, let me know where to find your music and what I can use, and I'll use any of it I can and credit you and send people over to your music. Cool beans. Let's save and we're going to call it a day. Web. Oop, don't want that. <laughs> Herb instead of web. And now the nerfed. I can't believe that Webtoons doesn't allow anything over 800 pic pixels wide. That's like so baby small. Like, look at that. All right. Save as. Webtoons. And we're done. All right, that's next week's comic. Uh, th this week's episode is live on Webtoons. The page you see here will go up next week. Uh, with that, I'm number one Marmaduke fan. At me at Jane and Akira or email me uh, at janeandakira at gmail.com if you want to share some music or anything with me. Uh... You have a mail, it's easier for me. Yep, janeanakira at gmail.com. I do have a Discord, but I haven't been using it that much because I'm kind of a boomer. Munchie uh, lost his SoundCloud. Were you posting links to Japanese propaganda? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to chat with you a little bit. Maybe finish this song and we'll call it a night. So chill. Oh, I don't want to save this. It's super teeny tiny. There. Can I send it into chat? Uh, do I know how to do that? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Okay, I'm gonna go to Discord. And then I'll see if I can like go to YouTube and paste it. And then we'll call it a night. Monosaturated good thing. Yeah, I'll start pasting the link to the, like the thing is I don't I can't keep up with it all. Like I can keep up with YouTube chat, but am I supposed to keep up with Discord and Twitch and YouTube chat? Like how does anybody do multi streaming? I don't get it. You need like editors just to keep up with all the comments. Okay, Discord. Uh where is my group? Number one Marmaduke fan club. And then how do I share this? Uh I don't know how to share a link of this. Welcome in rules. Here's the rules. <coughs> At <coughs> member list. I don't know how to save this, guys. I'm too boomery. Uh, 
Philip, do you know how to find the link for my Discord? <coughs> we can chat there all day long. All right. Yeah, passwords on paper. Everyday chat. Invite people. Uh, your invite link expires in one day. Okay, copy. So this has one day and then it's going to expire. So you guys who want to join the Discord should get in. Uh, I got to get to my channel. <coughs> oh, invite people and I can just invite you, Philip. Okay, I'm going to paste the link first since I've copied it. And Philip uh, Hutter, do you have a preferred email? Because I'll go ahead and invite you since you're really interested. Oop, I got to turn off my sound. We're going to be getting echoes. <coughs> no, no, stop, stop, stop. Bad YouTube. All right. Here's the Discord link in the chat. Uh, Philip Hutter, like, tweet me or email me your email. Okay, there's the Discord link, so follow that if you guys want to join the Discord, and I'll figure out how to add you. I'll give people a minute. What happened to Pretzel? All right. Okay, it's just playing the next song. <coughs> Minimize... All right, Philip, I'm going to give you like another minute if you want to give me your email or Discord username. I'll show off my cool art. I don't like that. <coughs> Perfectionism, here I come. send you via DMs. On Twitter? Okay. Or on DMs on Discord. Did that make any difference? I think it like just pushed out the... Just hopped on the server. Nice! Alright. Yeah, we gotta keep your identity a secret from the world. No, it's fine. All right, on Discord. All right, I will add you on Discord, Philip Hutterer. I guess I should save this again before I forget, shouldn't I? Oh, shoot, I gotta uncrop it. All right. Always something. I'm going to save this before I forget, and then we'll end the stream.
JPEG. Replace, and we're good. <coughs> <coughs> All right, don't save. All right, gang, you have been a blast. Thank you for joining. Sorry about my cold and the coughs. I'll add people on Discord. With that, I'm number one Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. I love my fan artists, and I will catch you later.